Stan Jibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey One Good Vibrations, at your service to describe a, an antenna that I've never actually tried. But I don't see why it wouldn't work. It is a ground plane antenna fed with open wire line. Now you may wonder, wait a second, a ground plane antenna is an unbalanced antenna. Vertical radiator counterpoise. The vertical radiator might be a quarter of a wavelength long, but it can be a different length if it is inductively loaded or capacitively loaded or otherwise tuned at the base. I've found that actually if you make a ground plane antenna about three-eighths of a wavelength tall, you can use a capacitor right here at the feed point and get, if you adjust that capacitance to just the right value, you'll get very nearly a 50 ohm impedance with horizontal radials. <clears throat> of course, if you slope the radials down, you can get a 50 ohm impedance with a quarter wavelength radiator, but that's a little bit beside the point. The point of this whole discussion here is suppose that you want to to operate your antenna a really long distance away from your radio, say uh, 500 feet, a really long span, so long that if you feed that antenna with coaxial cable, that long span of cable will have an inherent loss of several dB to begin with, even with a one-to-one -one standing wave ratio. Moreover, it'll cost you a heck of a lot of money to get a very good coaxial line and run it for something along that distance, 500 feet. Say, Let's just say for, for the sake of argument that it's 800 feet. I know of a, a situation where that might actually arise uh, in my own practice. Uh, we have a, my parents have a cabin up in Wisconsin. I don't know if I'll ever actually put an antenna up on top of the hill behind that cabin, but if I do, I would have to run uh, the feed line for a good 800 feet to get up to that antenna. Well, you can fabricate your own open wire line, say with spaced six inches apart with plastic spacers every couple of feet uh, and uh, you can make that stuff have practically zero loss. Now imagine, just, just suppose for a moment, that you were to get a 9 to 1 ballon. Actually you get two 9 to 1 ballons. Then you hook them up, 1 to 9 impedance transfer ratio at the radio, 9 to 1 impedance transfer ratio at the antenna. You beginning to get the idea here? You hook this ballon up normally. That'll transfer your 50 ohm impedance right here. Now this is all assuming a perfect match at the antenna and the radio and a 450 ohm ladder line which is an entirely practical characteristic impedance for open wire line that you might fabricate or even that you might purchase. But I'd recommend that you fabricate it for a really long span. Get some, like, number 10 wire. Um, you know, good old-fashioned electrical wire, copper wire. Of course, that's going to cost you an arm and a leg, too. But, hey, you know, good stuff doesn't come cheap, does it? One to nine ballon here. That's connected in the traditional sense where you have the 50 ohm side at your radio and the 450 ohm side at your transmission line. But instead of terminating this transmission line with something like a, a dipole or an otherwise balanced antenna, you terminate it instead with another ballon just hooked up in reverse so that the 9 to 1 impedance transfer ratio will transfer that 450 ohms back down to 50 ohms, 9 to 1. And you've tailored your antenna carefully to make sure that it's as nearly a perfect match to 50 ohms as possible.
then you can run a couple of feet of coaxial cable from that ballon to your antenna. You can run as much coax between the ballon and the radio as you need in order to make your installation practical. You may not want to run that ladder line all the way down to the radio. You may want to have that ladder line start at the outside of your house, say. In my case, it would be in the basement. I'd have to run about 10 feet of coax between the radio and the ballon, but it wouldn't matter. All of this is a perfect match here, assuming a one-to-one -one standing wave ratio throughout. You have a one-to-one -one standing wave ratio on a big, heavy-duty, open wire line like this. You're going to see practically no loss at amateur radio high frequencies, even with 800 feet of line. So the only question, the only thing I'm not sure about as to whether or not this will actually work is whether hooking a ballon up backwards will actually work. Can you do that? I don't see why you wouldn't be able to do that. It's sort of like a transformer, isn't it? You hook a 1 to 9 transformer up in reverse, it becomes a 9 to 1 transformer, right? And you hook a unbalanced to balanced here backwards, it's balanced to unbalanced over there. It just seems to make sense to me that this would work. If anyone has tried this, please contact me. You can either, I'm going to try to remember to leave comments open in this video so that you can just leave your comments here. Otherwise, you can get my email by visiting my website at sciencewriter.net. I'm, I'm coming out with a book, by the way, about ham and shortwave radio pretty soon, unless something happens to the publisher and they decide they don't want to produce it. A book about ham and shortwave radio should be out in October of 2014. Uh, you should find it on Amazon or barnesandnoble.com or any of the other dot-coms. And, of course, you can probably also download a pirated copy, but I wish you wouldn't do that. I mean, you don't want me to starve to death, do you? Stan Gibalisco, signing off for now. Proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV from the Black Hills of South Dakota saying 73 and so long.